Hey guys, hey welcome to the land of Korean cinema. I've seen today's movie three times. I really don't know why I haven't talked about it yet, so let's talk about The Great Battle or An Shi Sung. The cast is ridiculously strong here. Cho In Sung, Nam Joo Yak, Park Sang Woo, Pae Sang Woo, Ahn Tae Gu, Go Watch Nine in Paradise, Song Long Il, and the list goes on. Fantastic actors, all of them. The year is 645. After killing 150,000 Korean soldiers in a battle, the Chinese army is about to enter the Korean capital. There's just a little bump on the road before that, a little fortress called Anshi. The Chinese army is approaching with 200,000 men to fight an army of 5,000. Cho In Sung plays the commander of Anshi, who's declared a traitor for not willing to send his men into a battle they can't win. So the rest of the Korean army most likely won't help him. The Great Battle is in the line of such movies as Train to Busan or Sinkhole last year. These are basically blockbuster movies, but they're so well done, they become an artistic statement. The cinematography of this movie is ridiculously good. If my guess is correct, they were using wide-angle lenses, giving the movie a big, epic feel. There's incredible space in the frames, and a lot of things can fit in there at once, but it never becomes overbearing or indistinguishable. Much of it has to do with the fact that the movie uses practical effects as much as it can. There is CGI, of course. When you portray 200,000 men, you're bound to use CGI but it's only really apparent when a lot of things are happening on the screen at once. And they very cleverly edit these wider shots with close-up shots of actual practical effects, so the CG is surprisingly well done in this movie. And not only that, but the lighting and the framing, it's all deliberate. Not to mention the jaw-dropping sequences during the battle scenes. Seriously, they will blow your mind. If this movie was only a visual spectacle, it would still work. The color grading is also worth noting. It actually helps for the CGI to blend into the movie so well. The film has a very distinct look. It reminds me a little bit of Mr. Sunshine, actually. The establishing shots of the woods, the mountains, the fields, they really come alive with this color grading. This movie looks beautiful. And as I said, the battle sequences are jaw-dropping, especially the close-up fights. The camera movements and the choreography is just amazing. And thankfully, the editing and the wide lenses allow us to see everything. Some sequences are just masterful. But the movie builds up anticipation really well, too. Before the first battle between the Chinese and the fortress, the build-up is just so good. You can feel the tension in the air as the Korean soldiers are facing the sea of people in front of them. And now that I'm talking about the soldiers, it's 645. Back then, Korea was called Koguria. It was way before even the Chosan period. I don't know how accurate the movie is in depicting the technology these countries had. I mean, in terms of weaponry. But if the movie is accurate, then both the Chinese and the Koreans were incredibly advanced. So the movie is big, it's epic, it's visually stunning, but is it that that makes it great? Partially, yes, but also, no. What makes this movie great is the fact that it focuses on the characters as much as it can, especially on the commander's character. He's the definition of a leader. He cares a lot about his country too, of course, but he cares a lot more about the people of Anshi, and he's always at the forefront of everything. He leads by example, and he's also a brilliant strategist. Get ready for a few surprises because the people of Anshi are prepared but they can be prepared for everything, of course. There's also an interesting side story with Nam Joo Yak's character, who is originally from Anshi, but he's loyal to the main Korean army, and he is sent back to kill the commander. But then he starts to see what kind of a person he is, and uh, he gets a little hesitant, let's say. But really, the heart and soul of the Great Battle is the camaraderie between the people of Anshi. They are a little rough around the edges sometimes, they like to fight over nothing, but they also like to have a good time. And the movie focuses on at least seven or eight important characters, and they're all great the relationships between them, the grudges between them, but also the underlying love and respect that is there. That's great. That's what makes this movie a freaking great one. It's so easy to relate to these people, and it makes the final battle not only visually stunning, but emotionally feel too. If there's one complaint I have is that I actually would have loved to see more character interactions. Everyone's so likable and distinct, I really enjoyed watching these characters. But there are lots of battle scenes, of course. The first battle against the fortress is especially long. And absolutely incredible, don't get me wrong. And the movie does shift its focus on the characters as soon as possible. I would have liked some more of that. Also, the first few minutes can be a little jarring and off-putting. It's amazing to look at, but the movie opens with about five sentences of exposition and then it suddenly throws you into a battle. You don't know what the heck just happened. It looks amazing. I think it's just a bit too sudden. Other than that, this is a fantastic movie and I highly recommend it to anyone, actually. It's not only a fantastic spectacle, this movie has a heart and soul. I'm gonna give The Great Battle 95%. Sometimes might not be historically accurate, I don't know. But man, is it awesome. 여러분, 오늘은 여기까지만 해요. 영상 봐주셔서 감사합니다. 이 영상 좋아하시면 구독과 좋아요 오차 부탁드립니다. See you very soon. 다음 시간에 만나요, 여러분. 안녕히 계세요. Bye!